Welcome to this video where I'm going to do a full Pacta demonstration using the armies you can make directly from the PSC box sets for the late Romans and the Sassanids. And I'll talk you through quite a bit of my thinking. So here's the content bit for the late Imperial Romans. You can see that there. And this is the army you can build out of it. Essentially, we've got six legionary auxilia blocks. They're all average. Um, they've, they've all got short spear and darts and we've got some cavalry and some cataphracts which are particularly potent and then some other light troops. These are the Sassanids, uh, different I AME mean, entirely, more mounted based and you'll see that that's got two elephants, it's got four cavalry tugs, uh, it's got some levy foot and then it's got a whole swarm of skirmishers further down. So we're going to play those out and I'll talk you through the whole thing. Okay, welcome back everybody. I'm now going to play out this Pacto game that we have set up. You saw the PBS and the troops being deployed and how all that worked. So we're now all set up and we are ready to play. The battlefield has come out quite neatly. We've got a coastline over here, so there's a secure flank all the way down here. We've got a, a rough wood there. We've got rocky ground here, which is not good for any close train troops. We've got a difficult going vineyard on the edge here which is going to block things up there and we've got a couple of gentle hills. So as I said at the end of the last video this is probably advantage roam from the PBS and you'll find that the PBS part of the game swings things a fair bit just like reality if the better general manages to pull off fighting in a better position. So right now I feel a little more comfortable with the Romans on this table than the Sassanids the Sassanids would have liked to have got rid of all these so that they could actually manoeuvre their fast moving cavalry around and forwards and backwards and do some more interesting things. So let's see if Rome can take advantage of that. Rome is the invader, so it starts off active. It did a strategic intercept if you remember. So the first thing we need to do is to give every general some discs. So let's let's start off with the Sassanids. So We've got a, I'll put them down so you can see them. Red, black, green there. I'll turn them over for tidiness afterwards. He's got two competents here. And there we go. He's got uh, a four over this side. The talented. Pum, 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 pum. Well, he's got quite a good set for advancing all of those if he needs to. Not bad at all. The Romans have got four generals, but, but they are rubbish ones. Quite common actually for the Romans, not terribly talented generals held together by the troops. Let's see what happens. And one or two geniuses thrown in, such as the Caesars and the Aetiuses and the Pompeys and, uh, and such, and Crassuses. Let's see where we get to. So this is what we've got. Now in playing the game, especially when you start out, I do recommend that you follow, you follow this turn sequence quite carefully. You've got purple new ones of these. This is the final 2021 that I'm using. I actually don't have a set of my own rules yet. It's quite funny, isn't it? They've not managed to make it to me in South Africa. So uh, any of you've had to wait a long time, I do apologize, but rest assured, I've had to wait even longer. But it's the same material, so what we do is we have the card phase, we've dealt them out. The next thing that happens is anybody who's got a floating general, namely the Romans, can decide where they want to allocate these three. So the Romans have quite a bit of flexibility here. So at this stage, sharing my options and my thinking, I'm thinking where do the Romans want to seize initiative and be aggressive and where can they cope? Well, they can probably cope over here quite easily for the time being because they have a slight disadvantage in the skirmish battle and if they're going to win the game it's because of the legionaries and the quality cavalry. So we want this side to move particularly fast and particularly well. So I'm going to try and set it up so that there's a fair bit of flexibility for the troops on this side to do some good work. And I'm going to put a red with those and I'm going to put two yellows with those and I'm going to leave him just with the two and see what happens. So that's the power of the flexible system the Romans have in command. Over here they've no such alternative. They have to keep what they've drawn. They're instinctive generals so they just have to live with it. And there's a black 
in the middle, which won't cause too much difficulty actually, and well stuck there. So we're ready. So my strategic thinking on this side is let's force the issue as much as we can with these. And if we can get these in the fight, even better. Going to have to worry a little bit about this flank possibly, but we're not massively outnumbered. We're only outnumbered a little bit, so we'll, we'll see how it progresses over there. And I'm keeping the cavalry back as a reserve so they could swing that way or that way or go straight through the centre. So let's, let's press hard with these. It's often good to do double moves at the beginning and power the pressure on. So I'm going to do a double move. I think I'll do double move first of all with these infantry because I know the cavalry will be able to come up separately because these will block any fast advance by them. So if you look at the chart which gives you all of the moves and the colours, if you look down to an M14 double move, it allows you to do two green moves. That's very important. It's not any moves, it's two green moves which means drilled troops have an awful lot more flexibility than other troops. They can actually do some quite clever moves. So I'm going to do the, uh, the move with the infantry. We will do a double move, carrying a yellow for a double. And we will go a white upgrade to green because the general is with them to turn that into a block move. And a block move, you can move as many as your general is allowed. This is, this is a mediocre general, so actually he can only move two. So that's one of his limitations. That's one of the things that's going to be difficult in this Roman design, is they operate in pairs. It's difficult for them to move in threes. So the limitation is the two only as a, as a way of pressing. The benefit is you can move them around as much as you like. There's an argument to be said it might be better to have four and two in this army and, uh, and that might ease some of the command issues but I've left them as threes because I think they'll have enough to to bring them up and support so they get to there and they can do some reasonably clever things and I think they'd like to close the gap so what they're going to do is they're going to actually do a move with a shift which is something only drilled can do so they get a base which, which is which is half a frontage impactor 20 mil and then the next one They'll go fully forwards and they'll do another half way. So they've closed the line, they've closed the space with their fellow legionaries and they've placed themselves there. Sorry, the last one can't move yet. It's, uh, I'll have to wait. So that's the two done as a block move. So very interesting to see how difficult it becomes over here having the design. We can have a natter later about alternatives, but um, I wanted to set this up to show you all sorts of challenges as you set your armies up that you can then think about. Let's go with the Sassanids. Well, what do they want to do? Well, they want to pile maximum firepower on these Romans and try and cause them some damage early. So a relatively easy choice for this one is to simply advance all of those in a, in a, in a block move. He's talented. One, two, three, four as a block move. Any tug, any heavy unit moving can push or pull or drag around a skirmish unit. So Tugger Sug is its nicknamed. So that one's pushing that one forward. That one's pushing that one's forward. That means all six of these move together for those two. So look how much more efficient that is than this. Two discs here got two Romans moving forward. Two discs here has got six Sassanid moves moving forward. So that gives you a little demo of that. And they want to come up within shooting range, which is three. So as long as they're within six at the moment, let's have a look. They are exact, exactly at six, which is, I suppose, where you would be. They'll put themselves at three and they're now in shooting range. Dum, 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 dum. And they all move more than three, so they're going to go three and a half, because I think one of the tricks in the game is it's not very fiddly, so you're far better not leaving yourself millimetric, you're far better showing that you're clearly between two and three, because that's all that matters. So they're between two and three away. All of those can now shoot at these. Uh, this guy over here is going to advance one of these. He's going to do the same sort of thing. He can't go to within four, so he's going to be lagging a little back. Um, but he will do via two wheels. Um, um, bring it up to support those. And that's another yellow gun. And he's still sitting there with the green left. So stacking him with cards allowed him to get all of those legionaries up into the fight relatively early. 
Now, if we look over here what we want to do, well he's going to switch over to the skirmish side because over here he's got some advantage on the skirmish side. Again a little tricky because he's got four units with three and he's got a black. So we're a little limited here. So what he's going to do is he's going to use the black upgraded with the general to white which will only allow you to go dead ahead. So he's going to go dead ahead like that and he's not going to go dead ahead with a block because if you turn into a block these guys would run into the difficult terrain there which was deployed early as an option to ride through it for something but they won't want to do it now. So that's a useful use of a black. So even a black if you set your army up correctly you can do something. Well the Romans would like to get all these up as well so there's enough power there for a double and again they won't be able to shift the second time so they'll only be able to shift over once. So they'll get to there with their first move and they'll get to there with a wheel with their second so they're working to join up the line but again he's got the predicament of being a two-car general so there's the strain of the command structure on him that he's, he's struggling to manage all of these troops without the assistance of his army commander giving him some boost but he's not too fearful because leaving one behind could be quite handy so there is a logic to that Back to the, uh, the Sassanids who really do want to do some advancing with shooters. So what we're going to do with those first of all is, and it's an it's expensive use of cards, we're going to do a double move with the infantry over here. We'll do them as a single because there's only two left and we will advance them to there and keep them a little bit further out of range. We'll go to about there level with the cavalry. That looks quite pleasant. They can live with that. There's a green guy. Coming back to the Romans, he's going to want to keep that for those cavalry if he wants to do anything with them. And we will swarm up with the with the heavy cavalry I think. So we can't go within four of those. But it's quite easy to do a double move with these because a red will allow a double easily. That will allow us to turn it into a block move. Block move can be two and he can pull the skirmisher along. So they're all going to go and the slowest troops are the cataphracts. So let's work the cataphracts and we'll end up something like so. And he's got a green left. Uh, Sassanids, looking over here, he's got two reds. So those are superb discs, so he's thinking I'll keep those. I have nothing particularly I need to do. I could advance these, but that's a bit of a liability, quite possibly. Um, the guy over here has got a red left and does want to support his infantry. So he's going to do a double there as long as it doesn't get within four of those. Look at that. Perfect. So he's got skirmishers into the rocky going there, approaching the Romans. And he knows, of course, that there's nothing, no initiative left here. It's, it's started to, to go. Romans will now pass, I think, because that green and that green might be useful for the future for, for drilled troops. They can do quite a lot with the green, stop you the risk of getting a black or a white with it. And these cavalry at the moment, he's not decided what to do with them. There's a good chance they're going over there, but he doesn't want to decide that yet. So the Romans will pass. The Sassanids at this point could pass, but they want to pour firepower on the enemy. So they are really going to want to go directly ahead and that for a block move and they want to get all of their cavalry here all of their Asveran inside three but outside two and that will give them the maximum firepower chance okay and there we are set up and the end of the turn you we will uh, we will finish off with that position so this is what we've got at the end of the turn. I'm just going to take a quick photo of that so I can insert a top down image for you. I'll do it with a better quality camera and then you can see how the game progresses with a top down view of everything. There we go. So back to the turn sequence. So first thing we do is we discard any cards we don't want to keep. Well, that one's definitely going. These two you'll remember are red. They're definitely staying. Uh, greens, greens are actually quite useful because they allow you to charge. 
So actually I'm going to keep the two greens with these guys to limit the risk of them drawing whites and blacks. Everything goes back in the bag. Give a good shake. Let's re reload with this. And you see how the discs blend in, so it keeps the battle looking really lovely. The new ones that have come out match the green tops, so they are superb, absolutely beautiful. I'll demonstrate some when I get some. So there we go there. And three for the Roman Army Commander, who's sitting back looking relatively confident at the moment. Let's just see what they got. He's got three greens to hand out, they're all useful. That's a nice pair. Drew a white, and those both drew a white. Probably good they kept a green, because if they'd drawn a black to go with that white, it could have been a bit messy. Let's do the, the Sassanids, the skirmish commander on this side. Oh, black, white, white. That's, that's not too good, but at least skirmishers can do a lot of things with a white, with a white disc. So it's not as terrible as it appears, thankfully, for his type of command. Let's see about the Azaran Cavalry Commander. He should have plenty because he's only got two to command. And he's got three discs, so he's going to be fine. He can do whatever he like. And the Sassanid Army Commander, with that bulk of the army, has got two yellows to add to his two reds. He's got a phenomenal set. He can do what he likes. That's impressive. So, we have our discs. So first thing we're going to do is allocate these greens. So now we need to think where we're going to need to move things. This guy is definitely going to want to move both of these. So he needs at least one extra to be able to manage to do those. Uh, this guy could do something to move some skirmishers or these in addition. Over here, he's going to want to drive some things away as quick as he can as soon as he gets in charge reach. But he isn't there yet. So actually, that's enough for them to advance directly forward. So he doesn't need it. So we'll give it there so the skirmishers can do it. Okay. So, that gives a bit of bit of flex. And now we follow the charge sheets explicitly because sometimes you will get charges even in turn two. The game's very fast moving. If these were lancers, they would probably charge these. They're shooters, so they don't want to. So no charges on the Sassanid side. The Romans don't want to go charging into these cavalry. They want to press them until they get a better, stronger line. You will see why in a minute when we do shooting. And these are out of charge reach with cataphracts, so there's no point charging with just the cavalry because they could easily lose to these superior uh, Zayadan. So no charges. What's the next phase? Shooting phase. Vitally important in the design of the rules. The shooting phase comes before the movement phase. This is what manages the powers of shooters sensibly. If you can move, expand and then shoot, it gives shooters this incredible unrealistic flexibility, um, at least in my mind. So. The way the rules work here is you, you shoot before you move, which means last turn, with all the interactivity of movement, you have to have put your shooters in the right position for them to be able to fire without moving, which feels much more sensible and much more realistic. So let's do some shooting. These are all out of range, that's very easy. But these all came within three but out of two. Now we get some of the cleverness of the characteristics that bring armies to life. All of these Romans, have got javelins and darts in reality. So they shoot to two on a white and to three on a black dice. All these cavalry are experienced shooters. They shoot white to three, as do the slingers. But the Romans have got a characteristic called shield cover, which is like locking their shields together and accepting um, that they're not doing anything else in the front rank. They're just protecting themselves from, from shooting. So what's gonna happen is we are going to we're going to fire with all of these at these but they're all going to opt for shield cover so normally this would be white but the shield cover drops it to black which makes big damage pretty unlikely so let's see what happens and then we'll look at whether the romans can shoot back he's going to concentrate two on that one did an s which doesn't do anything unless you're using optional snow rules this is going to get two slingers on that one did a wound so there's a there's a nibble there so a tiny bit of damage there, and these two will concentrate on that one. Now one of these will be shooting a, a factor down anyway, because it's only one base deep. So that one will go down to black for shield cover, sub-black because of nothing. So once you get one base, one base deep with experience, the shooting is a lot less dangerous. So there's only one dice that can do anything, did nothing. So by doing that, they managed to keep the damage down because they, they were firing on, on black dice. Just to do it with white dice for fun, you never know. That would have been a wound there. 
an S there probably end up just just the same and a white plus a black there because that one would actually shoot that would have been the same one wouldn't as it happened but you can see a bit more scary so let's uh, let's now see if the Romans shoot back well they would have two ranks deep shooting with darts so beyond two darts go down a dice to black but they're not using their front base it can't contribute to the firing if it's shield covering so it's there blocking the shooting but it's not throwing so they would drop down another level and drop to sub black so actually the sacrifice the Romans make there is they can't do any effective shooting back with their darts if they put the shield cover into place the front rank but it protects them and they really want to stay protected until they can do some real damage that's the shooting phase next movement phase okay the Romans did first go last time so it is the Sassanids who are active this time we usually signify that by keeping the bag on the side of the active player I'll try and do that as I go the bag of doom or as some people call the bag of love it I mean it's, uh, it's got that's got all the stuff into win and lose battles so first thing is going to happen the Sassanids don't want to make any decisions here just yet they'd like to wait so what they're going to do is they're going to do slightly more innocuous stuff over on this side now there's not a lot they can do with these various discs so that one again would allow directly ahead he'll store it for that I think what we need to do is we need to move forward and try and win the skirmish battle so he's going to move these over there so that they're in range of shooting the enemy archers and we have that that's spent Romans um, Romans are quite happy to do something with initiative because they want to they want to pressurize everything in the in the center so they're going to do it gradually just with the disc they've got so they're basically going to put all their troops one by one into the face of the of the enemy so that will go there we'll do another skirmish move here same thing bring those up to there This is all going to be quite simple actually and what they're going to do we'll do another directly directly ahead move there so we're pressurizing those Zaydan cavalry with legionaries and gives us a free flank of cavalry to cause some trouble and we have it back over here he'll use the black now that he had left and that will be used to go directly ahead so he'll bring those up so they're in range of they're in range of the shooters there um, hoping to get lucky and win an even fight for now until he can bring up some reinforcements but if he does it's quite handy if he loses them it doesn't matter that much because slugs don't matter to the army they're somewhat disposable last green there puts them into space Sastis now are back looking at all of these now the thing that strikes them is they don't they don't really want to be fighting at close range against these Romans and they're overwhelmed here so they're going to fall back and they're going to want to fall back with everything so they're going to fall back with a red and if you look for that that is a M13 they can only go back two if they're all doing it because you've got the elephants it's a red to do it because it involves elephants and another color so you have to use a yellow and a red to actually allow them to fall back two but it, it actually pushes them back again so that they are beyond two and inside and inside three for the for the skirmishers so they've still got some shooting here but they've fallen back which they're going to need to do because they've got a, a load of cavalry pressurizing them here it's going to get difficult uh, the Romans well the Romans can seize the initiative here and swarm forward with all these cavalry so that's enough to do a wheel because they're all drilled so if you look at advanced with wheel M3 drilled and formed can do that now when you do a wheel you must lock the edges sticks are very useful you've got to lock that corner and it's going to do that you can stop it at any time but it has to do something like that so it's going to wheel to there because that will get it back past its infantry so it's going to wheel two and then there's another two left because we've got cataphracts so it's going to end up there there they go that's a wheel done correctly for you makes a big difference don't start sliding them around it kind of spoils things a little bit because um, very few troops in the ancient world could walk diagonally didn't really happen it was difficult, difficult enough to do these 
Indeed, if you go on the uh, website, you'll find my recommended prompted action table for refights, and you'll find it a lot less generous than the game version, um, for obvious reasons. And we keep the uh, we keep the game version a bit more flexible because it makes it a more interesting game. But acknowledge that if you're fighting a real battle, troops weren't probably weren't as adept at doing these sort of things as well as we do on a tabletop. Decisions were more determined by misinformation, thinking you were superior when the enemy weren't, and discovering you were actually average and the superiors were exceptional. The enemy were exceptional. So this is this is the source of many battle real results is misinformation, misunderstanding, arrogance, boldness, politics, all sorts of things. So uh, we have a more generous system. This guy we gave four discs to over here, so he's got plenty to do once these guys decide what they want to do. Now, over here, he's only got two units, so he can afford to discard. He's going to discard a black and wait to see what the, what the Romans do. And he doesn't want to discard any of these, and he doesn't want to pass either, because he wants to get some things happening. So what are we going to do? is we're going to press directly forward first with a block move with these legionaries and get right in the face of those Asveran. There we are, so that's that. Now that forces their hand over here because they don't want to risk passing. So he's going to do the same thing, he's going to do a fallback move with formed. So the formed troops to fall back are also needing a red. So that upgraded to red to fall back with these formed cavalry, that to make it a block move. The difference being that this is, a, this is an M12, they can actually go back a bit further, they can go back three. Which they don't want to go, because they want to go back about two and a bit, because they want to stay within shooting range. So there we go with that. And now there's some decision times for the Roman, Roman here of what to do with these last two. Um, he could actually make use of these guys to try and drive some of those away, or he could bring them up to try and support the main attack. It's an interesting question. And, and he's not limited on double moves because those are only skirmishes. So he can go where he likes around here. So um, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Let me just check something. I'm going to see. There we go. Switch flexible to dress ranks. So here's an interesting move for you I'm going to do with them. I'm going to do a double move drilled with a yellow. I'm going to march them up to there. And then they're flexible, so I'm going to switch ranks, put them in loose formation, and the Romans are going to use them to drive those skirmishers out of the game. You'll see how that will work in a little while. So there's a flexible legionaries now with the, uh, with the deeper base auxiliary type figures to the front, so I know which way it is. You can use several different ways of identifying it, and they're going to support them in this skirmish tussle over here, which might stop any risk of this collapsing and allow that to progress really well. I'm feeling better as the Romans as the Sassanids right now unless something great happens. Sassanids, so they're going to keep that one, we, we're sure about that. He's going to keep both of those, I don't think he fancies risking bringing up his poor infantry, that will be a sort of last resort fight if it has to be done. There we have it. We go to the end turn, which is recovery, where you can bring off wounds. Unfortunately he doesn't have a yellow, a yellow was allowed to remove this. If they were in combat, it would be a red to remove it. And they have to be within two base widths, so they have to be nearby. So it's a, it's a tricky one to actually to actually manage to do that. Sorry, within four base widths, which is two of these base widths. So four, um, 80 millimetres. So we have an interesting situation going on here. Pressure building with the Romans driving the Sassanids back. The shooting so far not doing a huge amount. Shield cover being, being the safe net that stops that from being too difficult and some Romans have switched into flexible formation to deal with terrain over here and help anchor the flank against all these skirmishes. Let's take a photograph and we'll go to turn three. Okay. Interesting game. You can see how the PBS system has generated a really interesting battle here. The terrain has made it quite difficult for the Sassanids. They'd love to be roaming off in all directions, um, but given that they've got some elephants in their army who aren't quite as agile, they need space so they could leave elephants at the back and manoeuvre around. It's actually a little tricky for them to win this battle, I think, given the, uh, given the setup of the terrain. 
let's see what we get then. So the uh, for the Romans, he's okay. That's a reasonable pair for him. It's a reasonable pair for him. Um, that's not disastrous because a white is upgradable to colour. It's blacks that drilled troops don't really like. Let's see if our commander in chief has anything good to play with. Oh, a nice steady set to give out. So you wouldn't be feeling too bad about that. The assassin is skirmisher team over here. That's pretty good. Do a fair bit with that. The Sassanid Azvaran commander is abs uh, is not going to not going to be taking them backwards any further. So that's interesting. And the commander in chief on the Sassanid side. Yeah, not bad. We've got a black thrown in there, but he's got two good ones under there. So Okay, we have some interesting options here. So, again, the Roman commander's going to decide where to distribute these. And he's going to want to do a fair bit of action on this side at the moment, including a charge there. So I think he'll do that, because he wants to manoeuvre those. And this guy is going to want to move an extra legionary. So he's going to want one there. And at the moment, if he was to charge, it would have to be the cavalry, so they're still going to want to keep pressing rather than charging at the moment. So that's enough for them to move. So we may as well have that there and give some extra flexibility with the, with the troops over here or there to give some flexibility with the cavalry. I think we'll go for flexibility with the cavalry. There we go. Sits on the Roman side, this side. There's our this. So back to the turn sequence, charges, um, they're not really quite in range, this isn't going to be a chargey battle very much over here, but these Romans are going to really help, the legionaries are going to really help the skirmishers get rid of everybody. They're going to, they're going to do a charge move and they're going to point it, we mark them up in direction, we'll point it that way so that, so that hopefully they'll hit both. Let's see. 30, we're going to there, yep, so they would click both of those skirmishes. That's going to force them both to respond in some way. They can stand because they're in uh, they're in, in some sort of terrain. If they were in good going, they would have to skirmish or run away. They can't stand against heavier troops. But as they're in terrain, they could. The problem is they'll get slaughtered by these guys if they do that. So there's really no point risking them at that level. So the only thing to do realistically would be to try and get them out of the way. And these guys are very close, so they're going to go for a runaway move. And a runaway move means that they drop their shooting down a level, so it goes white down to black. They cannot use shield cover in a charge phase. So if they're charging, it's not possible. So there's no benefit for that. So it's a, first of all, we've got a black dice against those. It does nothing. Then they turn around because it was a runaway, and they do a full with a variable move roll on it. An extra one. So they would have gone four, so they've gone five. So actually those guys have run all the way back there. These guys don't get to shoot because the path of charge didn't go within one of them and it couldn't go past these guys. So basically the path of charge was something like that, if you look at the diagram in the rules. So these guys don't get a shot, they just have to run away. No, I've done the same. They're clearly quite scared of those Romans. So look at that. So this is just in one go, the use of flexibles, clever use of flexibles has just secured that side of the skirmish flank for the Romans. It's a very effective thing that they've just done there. And it's, uh, it's something you wouldn't have wanted to do in close order. In close order, these would have stood and fought you because you wouldn't have been prepared yet to actually fight in that sort of terrain. It's, uh, uh, it will give them a chance. They would have had two factors back against them. Uh, and actually, at first contact, it wouldn't have been too bad, actually. It, it would have only been slightly better for these guys, but, but in flexible formation, it would have been pretty horrible. That's it for charges. Shooting. There's some shooting at each other here with a green. This is a green. We'll just roll them as they lie. Nobody did anything. We've got the same thing down here. The Romans will just all shield cover. So, so here we go with... with Shield cover there. Mount. Shield cover there. A little wind on that one. 
We'll do a double on those because they're not within one, so we'll try and take a base off there. Oh, no, bad luck. And these guys have a range of three and pulled back with them, so didn't really stay in range. So that's a little bit of a challenge to have them there. Did they fall back? No, they only fell back as well. I've made a mistake there. I do apologise. It was an entire block, wasn't it? It would have been like that. And they still wouldn't have charged yet because they wanted to get the other thing. Yes, so it doesn't make much difference. So there's two more there. No. So they're now carrying two wounds, so they would quite like to get, get rid of some. Let me see what happens next. It's quite difficult playing games entirely on your own, talking, thinking, videoing at the same time. So when we get rid of this COVID and get together with people, it'll be easier to do some videos with uh, Andrew or other people, and those will work better. But I hope these suffice for now. So it's Romans. Romans first move. Well, we're going to press, but this guy is now glad of that yellow because he's going to use it to get rid of that wound later. So we'll go two greens and we'll pressurise again right in the face of these guys. In fact, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you something else a bit clever. I'm going to do it with these two first. So they're going to come up and press there as a pair. Boom. Reasons that will become apparent in a minute. Sassanids, well Sassanids is a bit annoyed about this. This is quite irritating. So what we're going to have to do is try and shoot up those annoying Romans that did that. So the only things you can do with the with troops that have done a runaway move is you can turn them around and do a move and turn around. So I'm going to turn them around there with a white. Turn one of them around there. Back to the Romans. Well, we'd quite like to get rid of some of these damn skirmishers and have a go at the elephants. And as we know we're going to recover the rune. He's going to play his yellow to move this one directly ahead. And when you run into skirmishes with heavies, you drive them back. And in this case, he'll just go back through their own elephants to there. And that's got rid of some of the shooting. There we have it. Boom. Squeeze them back. Now Romans are gradually working their way into a fight, which is ultimately what they want. And that is saving, if I remember it, for there. Okay, so now we have over here, uh, we need... I'm going to go back to the skirmishes. I think the skirmishes are going to just buy time. They're going to turn another one around there. So at least now they've got two shooting at the legionaries in there. And this time they could skirmish and have a chance of doing them some damage. So they might wear them down gradually. Let's go back to these guys. He would really like to keep that to take that wound off. Oh, it's going to be that's going to be a bit tricky. Um, the only way realistically could do that is to leave that one behind or advance one and then take it off. I think he's going to play safe. He's going to advance one. So you can see me thinking there. That's not altogether a clear one. Advance one. Save the red to take the wounds off. I think taking the wounds off with the Romans is going to be quite vital. Okay, next thing. Ah, can he go backwards? Well, he can at least go backwards with some troops. So he'll use two yellows. Sorry, he'll use a red and a yellow. Red and a yellow to bring the cavalry back because formed the fall back. Now it's yellow. Cavalry falling back is a yellow. So yellow and a yellow. So that is an M12, if you look at an M12, and he's going to fall these guys back about two and a half to put them sort of level with the, well, put them level with the elephants, and they're still in range of shooting there at this point in time. So there we go. Those have gone back. That's quite good. Now we've still got the cavalry over here. All right. They're all drilled, so they can do a wheel and, and break through. It's quite tempting at this point because we don't need all those forces just to plough ahead with a few things. So I'm going to plough ahead with the cataphracts. There we go. Can't quite get past the front line, but they're now in a position to charge, and they're the, they're the heavies. So that's the white done there. Over here, right, we're going to use a red to do a double move. I'm going to double move with these horsemen. Now, I'm thinking two possibilities. I could bring them here gang up fire on these guys or can I swing them all the way around here 
and give me two possible targets and see if I can rough things up. So I'm going to go more for the center. I've got to stay outside four of those guys. So I'm going to go around the back of those, which is fair enough. So a wheel around there is about three. So it's probably not worth me doing a wheel. I'll turn and I'll do, I'll do four because they were too wide originally. And then I'll do a six into there. And they're looking more useful now for causing some trouble and assisting on the other side. Okay, back to this side. Well, I've got a, I've got a green here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double move if I can. No, I can't because he can't get through the gaps. It'll only be a single move, but I'm gonna single move these lights and get them through there because that could be very, very irritating for the Sassanid player. And actually, these guys are quite vulnerable, so I can get two ahead of those because that's where we were. So that's precisely where they are. They're not quite in range yet, but these are quite vulnerable to shooting. So they're poor, so we'll see. Here, well, he's got a black. A black really gets in his way. He could pull something back, but he could only pull a single unit back, or he could move forward with something. Mm, very little to be done with that one. So he will ignore the black and save the red for next time. And the guys over here haven't gone enough to fall back. Um, because they'd need a yellow to fall back. So he could only fall back with that one by upgrading, but then he couldn't do a block move. So they're a little they're a little cornered as well. So if they're in range to shoot, his best bet in all truth is probably to leave them where they are. So the turn's finished. They're going to both end up passing. Recovery, recovery phase, last phase. Romans do some good stuff. There we go. Going to take that wind off. Good use of a red there. That's preparing them for the fight. And here, the yellow, because they're not in combat, we'll take that one off. Look at that, the Romans have got themselves back in very good shape. Very nice. Over here, no wounds to take off, but beginning of the next phase, which is where it's shown the sequence, we're going to discard those, and we're going to discard that. And there we are. Put that back over the Sassanid side to remind me while I take a photograph that's then next. And let's take a picky. What fun. Battle's looking very interesting. Took you a few close ups so you can see what the uh Assassins look like when they're all painted up in battle because these are the same figures that you'll mainly get in the PSC packs. Yeah. The Romans are quite different. The Romans are far better than these. These are my older, older Romans. So off we go again. Deal some for the Romans. Let's see. Yeah, you can see how easy the colour system works. Red and a, hmm, interesting. That's good. That's good. There's no, no, nothing to worry about with that one. That one, no, oh, he's a bit limited. So this time he's going to need the help from the commander if we're going to keep it going on that side. See how well we're doing, even with three mediocre generals. That's these skirmishers. See, of course, with two light horse, these skirmishers could be running riot if there was less terrain on this side. But they can't, as it is. Another limiting, slightly limiting set there. Potentially can go, it can go backwards. It's got just enough. And four here. Now you'll find in a shooty battle, combat might take a little bit longer to emerge. In in, an, in a battle where both sides are more fighting troops, you usually get the first charge in first phase, turn three, usually. Occasionally turn two, sometimes turn four, but on turn three. With a shooty battle, it's more like five and six quite often because the shooters are trying to buy time to do damage. So now we have some interesting predicaments. These elephants uh, opposite these don't like being there because they will get shot at. And then if they get shot at, they can't do anything back. There's no protective screen anymore. So that's a pretty important area of the battlefield. But the Romans don't really want to charge cavalry with infantry until later when they're weaker. The one place they've got strength is here. So let's look. I need a green for definite because I need a green to be able to move those. And if I look elsewhere, where can somebody use a black effectively? Well, he could use one to go directly ahead there. So that's going to be okay. 
where do I want to be able to do quite a bit? Uh, well, we, we might want to press here or we might want to move the cavalry or we might want to take advantage of our skirmish opportunities here. Mm, I'm going to focus on the main battle. Often in, often in Meg you'll find, give your power to the main fight, leave the skirmishers to do whatever the skirmishers do. They're not as important in the game unless they're affecting the main battle. And this is kind of a wing affair all of its own, so I'm going to leave them to it. Charges. Okay, interesting stuff. Could charge with us, drive them away some more, but can't use shield cover. And actually, I might get a bit hurt doing that. So I'm not going to do any charges there. Um, don't really want to do any charges on this side just yet, but this side we do. So this side we're going to go with a charge with those cataphracts and we'll charge that Zayadan unit at the edge there, sort of like that. And given that's the only charge at the moment, the Romans are quite keen to keep pressing with everything else. It's only that one tug here that has to respond. That can't do any damage shooting for two reasons. It's one deep and they're fully armoured. So that's two minuses, so it'll be white, black, sub black. But he's going to do a skirmish response to keep himself facing in the right direction, I think. If he did a runaway one and blew it, he could get hit in the rear and that could be just a total disaster. So he'll, he'll do a skirmish response. One, mm, that would take it down from five, two off for skirmish for three, two off for the dice, down to one. They're superior, which lets them upgrade the dice by one, which at least gets in two. So they end up going back to there. So they're going to get hit by the cataphracts. That could be a little painful, but they are superior Zayadan, so they might, they might cope with that. And what else have we got at the moment? Nothing at the moment. So, combat there. Zayadan are superior. These are average, so they're one better for that. They have short spear, so they get one for that. The Romans over here are long spear, devastating charges, so they get two. So it's actually green against green in the first round, and after that, it will be materially worse for the uh, for the Sassanids. So let's roll the Sassanid dice there in that corridor. Roman dice there. Oh, they, they did S's. So actually they did a shatter, but there's nobody to assist. So if the cavalry had been next to them fighting something, it would have actually turned out to be quite handy. So that's going to stick where it is as a fight. It's not going to not going to do anything just yet. Shooting phase, a bit more interesting this time. So white against white down here, just to get that out of the way. The Sassanid shot. Any shots? Nothing there. Two blacks there because they'll shield cover themselves, which is what they want to be doing. Nothing there. Shooting down here, there'll be a lot of shield cover going on. Heel shield cover there, so there'll be a black there. Heel shield cover there, so there'll be two blacks there. No. And one of these has to shield cover, but not both. So this gets a bit more interesting now. So that one will shield cover, or whichever one they shoot at. So there's black. Nothing. And going back, the shield covered one there has gone down, um, has, has gone down to one rank. Um, so it goes down from white to black. And they're outside two. So that one's useless. But this one, this one keeps its original black dice. So the shooting in this, because of shield cover and, and darts, it's not proving massively effective at this point in time. So they're, they're giving as good as they can get against the shooters. They're holding the shooters up pretty well. Movement and Sassanids first going out. That's interesting. That's quite interesting. So beginning of the movement phase, you can choose to align. So I think the first thing that happens is the Zayadans are going to do that. And then there's a bit of thinking to be done over here. What are we going to do in this middle section? Do we want to delay the fight still further? Because we could potentially pull everybody back with these two reds, but it's a very expensive consumption of two reds and leave nothing else to go at. Hmm. We're going to think about that a little bit later. These guys have also got quite a few options, so we'll think about that one for later. So we're going to start with the skirmishes. What can the skirmishes do that's useful? 
Uh, well, extra extra firepower is never going to do any harm. So I, I think we want to do something with these guys. Let's go and sit along the flank of those guys and shoot at them. So there you go, there's a white used there. Romans, well we really want to press with the legionaries. So I'm going to stick two of those right up in the face of those. There we go. Still keeping a red behind. Back to the, the Sassanids. Well, I think they don't want to fight too early over here. They want to at least hope they can get something off with the firepower. So they'll play that upgraded to yellow and that for a block move. And they'll take these back so they're just inside three. Just inside three of those. For the time being. There we go. That black obviously will die later. Let's think what we're going to do with the Romans. Now, Romans, they, you can't be charged by skirmishers, so they're not too fearful of these skirmishers, but they can also shove them around. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to there. So they're going to get to there. So these guys have to drop a base width away from them and have the option to align, which they'll do. So there you go. So that's, that's that set up now. They're just driving them away. Back to the Sassanids, who will discard this black because it's useless to them. Back to the Romans. Well, they've got a, they've got a black. It's not a lot of use to them. All it can do is advance these fully. But as they can shift half a base width to get round, they're going to be okay. So they'll use it just to gain a bit of distance. Back to the Sastis again. Let's go for some more skirmish stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. Let's let's see if they've got enough there to deal with it. I think we're going to have to try ganging up on a few things. So with a yellow, they're going to do a turn and move. They lose a base width for doing it, so now they only move five. So they'll end up going there and put themselves in shooting range. Put the general next to them this time, just for ease. They're in shooting range of them as well. So they're trying to gang up skirmishes on them, but hope that even with black dice, they can do some damage. And then these guys, well... They want to really press forward. They've not suffered anything, so they don't need to rally anything. So they are going to use their red. And they're going to drive those ones back as well. And they're going to go really up close to those elephants. And try and force the elephants to charge them. Once a lot of troops get within main battle troops, non-missile focus, things that don't primarily like to shoot, get within one base with the enemy, they have to shoot and charge unless you pay for them to do otherwise. And that can be a, a, a real problem. Um, if I look over here, and this happens in games, and the rules specifically say go back and correct it if you miss something, I realise I missed shooting that one. I left it off because it was the non-black dice. Taking away the screen there means that these guys can actually shoot them at close enough range that they are worth a white. So there's a white on the elephant. Let's just check what happened with that. Nothing. Okay, so I didn't, didn't affect anything. But important because the elephants are brittle. They can't take many hits. So that's looking a little painful. So let's have a little look here with what else would happen now. We go back to the Sassanid side. I think he's just been convinced that we really need to bring everything back too. So he's going to have to spend his two reds, which leaves him all those blacks for everything to go back. The whole lot, because he can do the whole lot as a block because he's talented. The whole lot are going to go back too like that. And they're getting squished back towards their, their baseline, buying time, hoping the shooting actually does something which it's not doing. There we go. Well, at least now he doesn't have to charge with his elephants, which he really doesn't want to do. And in further, in further moves, these have stacked up a few reds. So they advanced already to get in their face, but this one didn't. So he'll play the same thing. He'll pressurise that elephant and see if he can actually force it to charge next time. There we go. That was one of their reds. There we go. Three reds. Excellent. That comes from this side. There we go. That was the one spent to bring him up. In terms of what's left, there's a white over here. And there's a red over there. They don't need to do anything. They'll save the red. Uh, the black's no use because he's nothing that is with him. He's already moved. The red he wants to save. It's just this white. And for this white one, I think what he'll do is... You know, He'll actually ride these sort of at the side so that they're in shooting range 
of those guys for next time. That makes things a bit interesting. Start peppering the levy at the back. Rums have really pushed through well in this gap and that, and that move with the flexibles really took care of what was going on at that side. Recovery phase, no wounds needed to be covered. Let me take a picture and we'll move on to the discard cards in the card phase of the next turn. I hope you're enjoying this because this shows this shows a shooty army versus a fighting army. So it's uh, uh, it, it's quite interesting. And a, a, a shooting army against a fighting army with shield cover. So you can see how it's actually quite tricky for the, to take down the shield cover troops with, with shooting. You've got to get a bit lucky and nibble a base here or two somewhere and then take advantage of it. Back for the Romans having the lead go. So let's put cat one there. Oh, there you go. He's not got a good set. He's going to need help from the commander in chief. One there. Two there. Let's see what we let's see what we've got to worry about. Ooh, the lights. Wow. Oh, interesting. Now that's an interesting set. So now the pressure is on for the lead commander at the back to bail everyone out. Okay, that's a more interesting challenge for the Romans. Let's see what the Sassanids get. They may have a, a recovery moment coming here. Three yellow, that's not something bad. Okay. Well, that's a bad set with a chief there. That'll be what we'll have as discs. We'll leave all these discs in place as a delay because it doesn't matter. But I've forgotten the melee. So let's see. That's what happens when you play on your own. This one's more to their advantage. The ro the um, the cataphracts are fully armoured and long spear for two. The Zaydan are not melee experts, so they've nothing that you can do for that. They are superior. So it's actually now green white in favour of the cataphracts. Ah, well that was the end of that. So those broke. So actually we have a very interesting situation just before we deal all this this out, where they route and there are a series of cab tests. Now cab tests are the morale effect in the game. And uh, cab test is a morale effect, means that you affect things within three base widths of your troops, so of where they were. So it's not going to affect the levy at the back, but it's going to hit both of these at the side. And you get a dice against your enemy's troops depending on their grade. So if they are, if they are average troops, those are Romans, so it doesn't affect those, it doesn't affect those good, I think. If they were average troops, it would be, it would be a yellow, but because these are superior Zayadan, it's a green. I'll re-roll that because it was cocked, a wound. So that's panicked them a little bit and done a wound, which is quite a significant impact. And then the cavalry make a variable roll. So they've gone normal. So those are going to route all the way past these for five, and they're going to pursue four. Now that, at the end of the turn, is a little unpleasant, I have to say. I think there's going to be some very badly crushed levy going on here. There's a, there's a perfect target while the Romans keep the line busy. There we have it. No problem. So back to back to the discs. We've got to allocate these. Now there's a few challenges here. There's opportunities going here. I want to charge with those uh, with those cataphracts again. So I'm going to give them a green because there's nobody directly to head that they can hit. So we definitely want to do that. And the flanks looking a bit wide open. So I quite like to do some of those, which would be that upgraded to green. So that would be okay. Um, and the skirmishes might seem so that's probably enough for them to cope there. We want to maximize the pressure on this side and we're probably prepared to just stick it out and halt over here. Um, it would be quite nice to bring a skirmisher up or two. So we'll give a white there and we'll put a yellow there. There we have it ready to go. And it's the Romans. Let's go. Charges. Now there are going to be some charges. Can we on 90 degrees? So you could run around the back of those and chase those and end up down here. But it's a bit unnecessary because there's a, there's a lovely target there for cataphracts. So you're going to play a green to do that. Unfortunately, they're not directly ahead. Otherwise, it would be free to charge with those. So that's, that's going to happen. The, uh, the chap here has got very little to play with. So he couldn't stop the elephants if he wanted to. So he's going to have to let that elephant charge. And he's got a bit of command chaos here because... He hasn't got a green to make that elephant charge. So it's just this one that's going to do a force charge in on its own, which might turn out quite badly. So there we go. So that's a, that's, that's a force charge there that they're not stopping happening. Um, could charge with those to chase them away, but I think he'd rather just hunker down at the moment. 
Um, he's now getting peppered rather a lot and needs his shield cover, so I think he'll wait for some support. And the only other issue is what to do with the Sassanid cavalry. Now it's looking a bit messy over here. So the Sassanid Zayadan probably need to try and fight their way out of this because it's, the elephants are going to need their support. So if he can afford it, he'd like to charge with them. But unfortunately, he hasn't got a green, so he's stuck. So Sassan is owing him a command crisis at a very bad point in time. Over here, uh, no, they don't want to do anything yet. They want to move around and shoot. So that's the only charge phase. So these cataphracts are going to smash into those. And that's quite unpleasant. The cataphracts are average. The Sassanid levy are poor. So that's one up already. The, uh, they have long spear. And, uh, and they have devastating charges. So they've got three factors. The levy have only got one for their short spear and it only lasts for the charge phase. So when they get to melee phase, it gets a bit worse. So that's two up. So for the first time we have a yellow dice. Yellow dice versus white. Ah! The lucky levy against the odds have done some damage. That's interesting. Okay. That makes it sweat a little bit. Fascinating. The twists and turns in the game. Over here, elephants versus Romans. Elephants are very good against non-drilled troops because they're not as able to cope with things but um, so so if you have close order foot against them who are formed or tribal they get factor three but against drilled ones they're only factor two and and going back these have got short spear one so they're on the elephants are only one up actually against these particular romans but do a wound so they've done some damage so the elephants have done some damage in the center okay something's happening very good that's the end of the charge phase, and an interesting phase it was. Shooting phase. Shield cover them, definitely. They're going to have to face three blacks there, so the chance of some damage. There's actually a 1 in 216 chance of blowing them away. And there's a much bigger chance of getting three zeros. So nothing, nothing happened there. Uh, here they will shield cover as well for safety. Oh, so for the wound, that's a little more difficult. And they'll suffer another one from there. Two wounds. And now that's what they've been looking for. That's, that's killed the base of those Romans there. Even with the shield cover. And there's one there with shield cover that will shoot there. Nothing. The Zayadan will shoot one of those that's got shield cover. And they will shoot back with one that's decent even at long range. Nothing there. Down here, they're shooting at poor troops. So they'll go up white to green but it's a supporting file now which takes it back down again so it's a white so they still get to shoot them but it's a white now look but that's interesting we've got a little bit of damage to the romans there that makes them a bit vulnerable okay there might be a hole here opening up as well movement starting with the romans a little concerned about that now which means that we may not want to do everything we're doing for unfortunately we've advanced so far in our uh, determination to get there we've gone ourselves out of command range of the reserve cavalry so in our excitement to play forward it would take an extra card to do anything there and we really 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 want to pressure so first thing we're going to do is we're going to put that up to become an overlap there we're going to try and double overlap we're going to try and get overlaps against the elephant and take it down assassins have got the same idea so they'll do a white and bring that one up to an overlap position there same sort of thing in fact we'll move it far enough that they get a force charge next time as well it's probably even better done okay back to the romans well the romans would like to get some cavalry around this flank but to do that they're gonna to have to make some room so we're not going to be able to bring any reserves up we're going to do the aggressive version so they will form the line there Back to the Sassanids here. Mm hmm. Interesting. There's a hole here. There's a nasty hole here that we can't fill very easily at the moment. So we're going to swing. We are going to swing some cavalry forward. This one forward and round, and that we're going to do this. We're going to put them round the flank like that. So they're under serious threat now. That's, that's quite an interesting manoeuvre. There we 
yeah, so wheeled round and just ridden through the gap there. Mm. Bit of challenge for the Romans this time. This guy has got pretty limited capacity because we sacrificed himself to just moving skirmishes up. So he better just move skirmishes up. Now his command range is 10, so he can't really move those. It's going to have to be these. So we'll have a back to those move up with a white. Back to the Sassanids over here. Very little flexibility. He's only got whites. But even with a white, at least you can you can manoeuvre some skirmishes. So he's going to take some skirmishes here, and he's going to bring them backwards, and he's going to put them about there. The general will move. They end up about there. There we have it. Works pretty well. Next. So that's a white off those. The other two are blacks. So I'm going to dump them. I'll dump them now because they're no worth. No worth. So some of the short could you get. Next with the Romans. Well, these cavalry, um, they can wheel. So they're going to wheel once just to miss that and get themselves down here. So that they're starting to swing around the flank. They'd have loved to double wheel. Again, I'm going to discard the white because I know I don't want it. Save a bit of time there. The Sassanids over here have got a swarm of stuff to do that they could do so let us see interesting. interesting they want to get rid of those so they're going to do a few little tricks here they're going to move forward with these to stop them going anywhere to pin them down they don't care that they end up very very close so that's that first of all and the Romans on this side can move up another skirmisher so the light cavalry the light Horse there are going to get shot up by Roman archers. Now there's a bit of support. There we go. That's the white and the black can't be used for anything. And the last one we're going to do with that red is they're going to turn and move two there because we really want to get rid of this weak point. And now that he's within one base of breaking, he's close to breaking, you can actually charge him with skirmishes. Sorry, we want to do that around the he wants to get around the flank, is what he's trying to do. So he's around the flank of them there. There we go. Coming back to Rome, got a red, he wants to keep that because he wants to take that wound off. This guy has got two yellows, so he could do something else with some other cavalry. So the question is, what does he want to do with those? Well, if the gap appears here, he'd like to ride through it. So I think he's going to do a turn and move. So he's going to end up moving three. He's going to go that way. On the basis you might be able to exploit a flank in a little bit. All getting quite interesting. Can't quite fit the general where I want him. There we go. He's with those. Make a bit of room. There we go. Done. Jink. Okay, melee phase. Lots of chaos going on now. Lots of chaos. Let's go for over here. So the cataphracts now, they're only average, but that still gives them one better. They've got full armour, so that gives them another one. They've got lungspace, so they're three up. We get our first red. You dig out a red, red versus white. That's quite deadly, as just demonstrated. Take the wound, so they're getting a hammering. So this is part of the Meg game, actually. You, you don't get your troops coming out in perfect marching order from a parade when they've just fought a battle. So we've just lost a cataphract, but, uh, but, uh, but we've taken an entire base We've taken a whole base off that. So actually both of those are now within half of breaking. So that's a bit of a, a bit of a problem. So nasty, nasty. But the second wave will get them. Whatever. This is why these cavalry are there. If these break, as long as it doesn't do too much trouble for these, then these cavalry will fly in and they should finish them off relatively easily. Melly in the middle, we've got an elephant. An elephant now is down to factor one. The Romans are down to nothing because they're melee experts worthless. So it's a green against a white. And we're going to get an extra white for the elephant as an open supporting file here. Because that one can support that. And we're going to get a black for these ones. Right, so it's white and black versus green and, green and white. So let's see what we get. Well the white got a wound. So that's a wound on the elephant. Sorry, that's a wound, green and white, that's a wound on the Romans. I apologise, that's that one there. 
So that's lost the base, so they're doing okay there. Nothing back. Oh, the elephants are doing well. Elephants are pulling up a good fight. Oh, the Sassanids are fighting back on this side. Pretty impressive. End of turn stuff. There's nothing that can rally anything and recover. So we are done. So let's do another turn. Interesting times. Mm. It's a good tussle. Okay. Right. I'm trying to show you some of the little flexibility bits in the rules as we do the next bit. All sorts of things have come up, which is good. This is going to get a little dramatic. I think this time. Right. Romans first go, I think. So let's see. One, two, three for the commander at the back, who's seeing a few nervous moments appearing. Oh dear, that's not ideal. That's rather better. And on the cavalry wing where they're doing well, not great. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, can the Romans actually do very much? Well, they're happy with the firefight over here. There's not a huge amount of threat going on. He's only got that one that's a problem, and that's going to be a problem anyway. I mean, it is his go. Let's pick the first dice, which is something. So these are not a lot of use to this side. Where we need to go is where we're likely to win now. So I'm going to, I'm going to start packing a few bits on this side to give them some flexibility to do something. And... Let this let this struggle. We'll see where it goes. Let's see what the Sassanids get. The Sassanids have got two, three over here with the skirmish command. Ah, that's enough to keep them going realistically. Skirmish command over here is done, sorry, is done the center of command. It's not bad because they saved the yellow. So obviously saving this, if you can, being conservative can be really helpful. It can secure your next turn. And the guy in the centre has recovered to something a little bit more useful as the CNC. Okay, so in this turn, all sorts of things are going to happen. Right. So. Hmm. Let's figure out what we do. Romans turn, Romans first. Charges, no. Well, he's not really in a position to do a lot, um, but his best chance of causing some chaos is to upgrade that to green and charge with his infantry. What the heck, we'll, we'll have to charge these guys. So that's a charge there. At least it might cause a little bit of chaos if he survives it. He's going to get shot up anyway, so may as well charge. There's a free charge there, force charge in fact, with the elephant that's going to go in. Romans, and let's see, one, two, three, four, no, just a little bit out of range, that's what I thought. It's so better leaving the shooters there for now. Um, we like the overlap as it is, and we like that as it is. We don't want to be charging. So the Romans have got nothing nothing else they want to do as a charge. Uh, just stand in a, a form. The guy over here clearly does. So he's going to use a green to charge those in the flank. And that's his big chance for glory. And the chance for the Sassanids to do something dramatic. Okay, so let's evaluate those charges. This one unfortunately gets shot at by two white dice. But it does, at least, it does at least make the light horse respond. Oh, and they don't get damaged. Look at that. They, they walk through the hail of arrows. The skirmishers go back. Go back four with the skirmish moves. Stay facing the enemy. And they charge forward three. So that, that's, a, that's fantastic for the Romans in a way. Because it's got in the way of all the manoeuvre that could go on there. Brave legionaries doing what legionaries do well. 
let's look at the other ones as charges. Well, these are easy, these go in, there's no shooting involved. And if we look over here, there are no charges because these have both got missile weapons, so they need to be paid to charge. And actually, we're, these are waiting to see if they can, they can knock this elephant over, see if they can nibble it. So, charges that made it in. Romans are first, so that's quite important if Romans are first. It means that they get to choose first. So they're going to choose to fight forwards first. So the elephant is one up on the, on the Romans here. Actually, the Romans should have shot because they stood there. So they should shoot at the elephants on the way in. Yeah, didn't do anything. Green and white. Oh, heck, that's bad. That's a, 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 smashed the base off themselves and did a win. And I thought, that was bloody. These ones on the flank are really dangerous. So they're going to be four for a flank and they've got short spear for five and the Romans have got nothing to flank. So that is red, red, white, red and green, red and green. And it would have been versus a black if that base had survived. But it's, uh, it hasn't. So it's a red and green against nothing because there's nothing to fight back with. Because this base cannot fight twice. So, um, ah! It's still alive. Remarkable. Remarkable Romans. Not gone yet. Okay, that's interesting. That's all the charges. Shooting. Shooting, shooting, shooting. Okay. Well, down here now there's two whites at the light, at the light horse there from the Romans. Let's put a wound on. So there's some whittling around going down here. There's a black there because the Romans will choose to shield cover. Does nothing. Uh, they don't really have a target because the guys charged and got past them and they weren't quite close enough to shoot them as they did so. Had to be within 20 millimeter at one base width. And if we come down here, that's a that's a supporting file, which means they're going to go down to black because of that. Oh, did a wound anyway. And uh, those guys have got themselves actually got themselves a white for being in range this time. Nothing. And the skirmishers there can shoot those on a white and did a win. Okay, so there's a bit of excitement going on over there. Moves. Mm. It is going to get a little difficult. The worry is that these cataphracts might die. And that could be a problem. Could be a problem. They've, they've been whittled down, so that's a little tricky. So let's think what the Romans would want to do. I think the Romans first and foremost want to threaten the flank of everything around here. So I think we've got to risk it and we've got to pile these cavalry around like this so that there'll be a gallant cavalry charge flying in and take the chance because something disastrous is going to happen over here. So there we go. That's a on your white, so we can do that. Very interesting situation for the Sassanids to see what they do. I think the first thing they're going to have to do, to do is to get rid of that flank effect. So they would realistically want to retire those cavalry back a few bases like that on a yellow. And that way, that way they don't face a flank charge. So they've counted it by spending an expensive disc. So you pressure and then you get the expensive disc effect going on. Well, Romans, it's a bit death of glory now. So the Romans are going to go piling forward with those and go in the face of them so they've got a forward charge if they need it. And there we have it. We're going to save one of those reds. I'm going to leave it face up to rally that off, recover that off. So thinking ahead, he knows he's going to recover that off later in the turn. He's in desperately hoping to get rid of some elephants. This is looking tricky for the Romans now. It's turned... Turned in a bit of a nasty way. Right. Unless, 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 unless. Interesting. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Skirmishers here. Well, they're through, actually, in all truth. So this bunch of skirmishers are going to turn around like so and go behind the behind them there. So that's quite useful. Uh, in the centre here, uh, those cavalry could charge them anyway, so that's okay. They don't want to use a black, so they're going to discard a black. Romans, okay, Romans have got a bit of a problem. So these are out of command range. 
It's a very expensive move, but it might be a game saver. So they're actually going to do this. They're going to play both reds to double move these. And that will actually bring them up. And they can. this is one thing that works very interestingly in Meg, is you can race up and get yourself within four. He's expecting those to die, so he's thinking some of those may end up charging down here. And if not, he can block them this way. So he's going to position them there with a double move and brought them up to the rescue. That's going to be interesting. Sassanid, this side, probably all he wants to do is move his general because his general's more use fighting with the Zayadan than he is fighting with anybody else. Plus he can use a green to get, possibly, to get that wound back, which would be important because they're not in combat at the moment. The, uh, the guys here, well, we're all busy shooting, so that's fine. He doesn't need to spend anything else right now. He wants to save a yellow. Mm. If he could reach, he'd want to join those. I think what we'll do is we'll do a green to move these. So turn them and wheel them around four and put them in sort of that sort of position. There we go. Right now, these are going to stay because they're hoping the extra dice can actually uh, can actually destroy those cataphracts. Nothing else to be done there, and I think nothing else to be done there for the time being. So we have a melee phase. Let's start over here. So that was a red versus a white, and there's a black for the guys on the edge. So they've destroyed the ones in front of them and not been destroyed themselves. So there we go, the cataphracts have done it, they've broken through there. That could be quite decisive. That could get quite messy. And that wound could prove quite critical. Other areas of melee, uh, this is a big strung out one, so the, the Roman can choose. So let's try here. These are, there's, an, there's a supporting file there again, so Elephants factor one against the melee expert doesn't count, but he's not superior, so it's green against white with the elephant. He's no supporting file anymore because it's now busy, but these guys do have a black supporting file there. So this versus the elephants, nothing. This versus the Romans, ooh, demolition in the middle. The elephants have broken through. That's going to be exciting as well. So we've got two breaks. The, whole, the game is starting to unravel and revolve a fair bit. Here the Romans have first go, so they'll fight the elephant one down first and hope they can do something. No. They now face the useless cavalry on the flank who didn't do as well. This time they're only two up, two factors up. And in fact, they're going to stick the general in to get them three factors up. Boom. So they've broken those. So there we go, we have some breaks in the, in the turn. So when we get to the end of the turn, we've got our cab tests and pursuits. So the cab test down here is quite dangerous because... Those are poor, so you get a red against them. A wound. Okay, didn't quite break them, but one in three chance of breaking them could have got a skull. So that's that's the end of those, and they will rout off the table, and those devastating charges have to pursue, so they end up down there. This is end of the phase at the moment, so we haven't even got to recovery mode yet. But two Roman tugs have broken in the middle. So the range is three from where they were, so that's going to affect all three of those. And they're all average, they're all yellows. So, the guy at the front, suffers a wound. That one, wound. And the cavalry. Right, so, so that debilit had a debilitating morale effect on all three of those Roman units there. This one, range of three, which actually is going to mean... Um, interesting, di whether the diagonal bit quite catches it. Not quite, they're a bit far forward, that's handy. So there's probably nothing, because these are out of three, those are out of three, so nobody affected by that one. So let's take them off. That was that in a pursuit, that was that, and there's a compulsory pursuit with the elephant. Okay, well we're going to get in the way of it, the cavalry. And that one gives the option for either of these two to pursue. So, because they're wiped out with two units, they're, they're basically wiped out on the, uh, on the spot. So you get the choice of which you do. So actually, given the situation there's some enemy cavalry down there, I'm going to actually push the elephant through on a pursuit, and I'm going to leave the cavalry not pursuing, taking up their option. Oh wow, so that battlefield has changed a little bit. Look at that. 
and the recovery phase. Well, he's got he's got a yellow, so he can recover his cavalry. So that's useful. Over here, he's got a green. He can upgrade it to yellow to recover the Zaydan. That's good. Nothing else in range there. This guy has got a yellow, but nobody's recovered because the elephants are part of his command. This guy has got a yellow, so can take the wound off there, and we'll discard the black one. It's often done at the same time. So let's see, are we saving? He's saving a yellow. Uh, I think he will save a green. It can be quite useful in the circumstances. And that's the turn. Oh, it's getting a decide. Very classic, this. Shooting army fighting quite late. Gives you lots to, uh, lots to look at. Let's see. Peachy game. I think I've made about three three little errors on the way. She's probably not bad given there's no assistance around. Let's just take stock of the situation and see what you've got. We've got one, two legionaries there, three. So we've lost two legionaries at the moment. So the Romans have lost two legionaries. So the assassins have got four for that. The assassins have lost a tug of the a tug of the levy. And they've lost the single Zayadan that died. So they've lost two tugs. So they are four. Yeah, so they, they've suffered four. Two tugs down each at the moment. It looks like. Yes, yeah, so, so count the ones on the table. One, two, three, four, five, six. So yes, two down. Mm, decisive times. This one's going to be an interesting turn, to say the least. All they discarded this back in for the phase. This time the fastest first go, so I'm going to put their disc out first. Let's see what we've got. Skirmish flank over here, which has been a little passive in the game. It's done a very good blocking job for the Romans. The Asvaran sub general, who's doing rather well, and the and here's our centre one. Okay, he's got one red and two whites to go with his green. Well, always beats picking up three whites, which could have happened easily. Roman main commander might need to start to move himself nearer the uh, the battlefield now. I'm going to check. So, we'll check that in a minute. We've got a few to hand out. Two on the wing, where so far these Roman legionaries have survived. It's not bad. Two over here. And two more over there with the cavalry. Now his his range for actually uh, actually distributing cards is twenty, which is usually plenty, but actually it's getting a bit far away. So this guy is actually too far away. So this time he's going to keep a white because he wants to move himself to get himself nearer to the battlefield. He can't help those. He can help the other two generals. So where should we go? Well, who needs the help? Well, probably this one needs the red because it, he's got lots of wounds he's going to have to get off. And he might need to do something with these cavalry. This guy's probably going to lose those in a minute and be left with just skirmishes to deal with and all but that one are useful. So he doesn't really need anything. You're going to dump them all there. A whole lot are going there. And it's the Sassanis with the bag. So Sassanis' first choice. Chargers. Ooh. Well, tricky. Can't reach anybody there. Here, well here clearly we've got one I think which we should try. We should try an elephant and the big one that's unwounded is in range. So if you can afford a spare green, which I reckon you can, the elephants are going to plunder forward and force them away. That's looking promising for sure. Over here, these guys are on their last legs. So we're also going to do a charge with a green with those because it gives us two goes to finish them off. The shooting might not work with black dice. So he's going to charge them there. And actually, uh, I think to just give a double chance of doing it in a minute, we'll be, we might do something with a light horse as well. Yeah, that's it. So they'll charge those. These guys, 
might be able to reach, but I suspect not yet. Oh, near, not quite. So they can't do it till the elephants get out of the way. So that's fine. And don't think any charges here. Romans don't want to drive them away. They don't care really. No, they'll, st they'll stay as they are. They'll stay as they are. So, from those charges. Ah, there's one other. They're poor. And although they're a good target, I wonder if we should charge them. Because we're only one where I get two whites. If I charge them, I get two whites, basically. Because they're fighting skirmishes, they get plus two. Um, and they get short spears. So it wouldn't be good at the first combat. But they're poor, so I get one back. And I will get two goes. But I think I'm better at shooting them off. So we won't. We'll try and shoot them off. Cavalry. I think we want to get them in a fight. We're going to pay to charge with those cavalry as well. They're going to charge those cavalry. We'll give it a go because there's a lot going on here where they where they are making a mess over here as the assassins. So let's turn all those over and keep them neat. So this charge, easy. Going to skirmish back with the Roman cavalry. They're javelin armed, unskilled javelins. So they're going to get a black against the elephants. They might give them a nibble. No. But they're not going to get hit because they're going to go back at least one. They've gone back four. So, okay. So they've drawn those elephants in there. What's that? So that's perfectly safe. This one here, well, the, the Romans have got javelin darts, so they can get a black dice against the cavalry coming in. No. And then they will thunder into there and see what happens. Bank on the fact they only need a wound to take them down. And here the cavalry will do it, and the Zayadan probably are, because they're superior, probably don't want to shoot. They want to take advantage of the fact they're slightly better at first contact. So they'll just skirmish backwards. Okay. Table edge. There we go. That was unfortunate. They actually hit the table edge due to an extension. Now if a tug runs into a table edge, it has to take a cab test. So that may have been an error. Oh dear. That's a little bit of a disaster. Oops. Probably should have stood doing better and they and those guys crunch in there mm, that's a turnaround that's a bit messy there yeah. so the places where we made contact let's start where we were there the Zayadan are superior short spear so they're one better so they're green against white um, and they are active so they're going to choose whether to chuck their general in it's all getting a bit horrible so the general is going into combat yellow against white that leaves the Roman general a puzzle of whether he wants to go in, but I think he wants his command and control because he can manoeuvre things, so they'll have to live with, with them being two up. Okay, it wasn't disastrous, they took a wound, so it was okay. Over here, the Romans have got short spear. The cavalry actually have just got short spear, so it's actually going to be evens. Green for the Roman, green for the others. Okay, so they've, they've killed us. Now, because they've killed a file, killed a base in a file, uh, sorry, he wasn't in combat. Because they've killed the the unit, there is a tug on the, a cab on the general, so I'm tired. He's poor, poor generals don't have many bodyguards. It's driven by how many people, how many people want to keep you alive. So red, there we have it, the demise, the demise of the Roman wing general, he just died. So he now is placed somewhere at the back and his replacement will appear next turn in the movement phase so they've, they've been killed they will rout they're not near enough to cause anything in terms of cab tests but they've got rid of them and they route five away from the enemy so they're going to rout down there and those are going to pursue them and those romans have gone so that's three down three tugs down for the romans mm, all a bit exciting at the moment shooting phase start over there there's a green dice with those skirmishes on those poor Blow them away. So there goes another one. Boom. And they will run. And they are they are not within three of anyone, so don't cause any other effects. But that means there's now three tugs down on the Sassanid side. So the Sassanids need only one to break. I think the Romans need two to break. They're a little bigger army. The Romans need two to break. Mm. Interesting. Let's look at elsewhere for shooting. There's nothing going on there. There's nothing going on there. Nothing going on there. No, 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 no. There's no shooting. Shooting over here, however, these guys are going to pile, pile the shield cover on. They've got black 
dice, so there's going to be two black against them. Ooh, oh, they've shot the rear rank off. Now that is interesting. Okay. And, oh, and there was another one there, wasn't there? There was a black there as well, because they're concentrating on them. Oh, they've shot them away. Oh, well, Romans need one to break. That's simple. Those guys, two whites at that, nothing. And there's going to be cab tests on both of those. So two yellows. A wound. A wound. So the legionaries that went into the into the rubbish on their own to try and hold things up finally lost their way. So we now we now have four down. So very close then, four down for those for the Romans. Mm -hmm. Movement, Sassanids first. Well, I think the first thing to do probably with these guys over here is to uh, I'm gonna move an elephant, but I don't think they can. Because he's in combat, now he requires an extra colour to do anything, so he could only really do a skirmish move and he wants to save the red just in case. So really it's these guys who've broken through or if anybody are gonna save the day. So they're gonna ride right up into the back of those guys. Like that. There we go. That's one there. Roman commander here has got a counter that really, so we gave him lots of this. So he's he's going to turn on the spot so, he, so the front faces the threat. They might yet hang in there. So there we go. There's the front facing the threat there. General, I'm going to put there for the time being. And that, that's just a green. Sassanids. Well, they've got a bit of a swarm going. Um, they need to shoot up some other tugs. Now, there are no tugs over here. So, and they don't really care about killing those if they can avoid it. What they need to kill is to kill something else that's worth killing. I could do a move with these. And they could do a turn and move. So let's turn those and move them four and bring back those victorious guys. Oh, they charged. Sorry, do apologize. Got to keep an eye on that. They charged. So you can't do that with those, which means he's saving his yellow for something else. Tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Mm. Okay, we're going to do something very dramatic, which will make you laugh. This general here is going to leave combat. He's going to play a white, upgraded to green, to leave combat, which will allow him to move, and he'll move down here, and he'll join those skirmishers. But that is what we call the snivelling little coward test. He's run and left his troops. So in the process, they have to take a cab test, so it could destroy them. They are superior, so it's a green, but he feels like the battle could be, uh, could be gone if he can't pull something off. Hey, successful. Look at that. He's, he's done a still little coward and got out of the combat. Well, that's interesting. Very good. Okay, and he'll align those just for simplicity. This guy who didn't go in combat can turn those, which is why his general's got out. So he's turned his cataphracts and they're on the flank now. So there's a very short life expectancy in that corner right now. This, this guy still has a white and a red left now, though. So that's, that's quite handy because with the red... With tribals, I can turn on the spot. Can't turn a move, but I can turn on the spot. So he's going to turn an elephant on the spot there. If we last long enough, he might be able to get the elephant in. This guy is forming a new line, so he's going to turn there. There we go. Drink. Look at all these. Lots of wounds out there. He's got a red and a yellow to tidy it up a little bit later. And this guy is going to move up there and join the cavalry. It might help them. Commander-in-chief joining the cavalry. There's, there's two skirmish ones there, but he's now out of commission, so he has to pay extra. He has to pay an extra coloured. So it's a white for a skirmish move and that, and he'll at least bring these off. He's been wanting to do it for a while and put them on the flank of those light horse. So he does that even though he's a dead general. It's his, it's his subsidiaries doing it. And but these guys have got lots of skirmish potential, so they will basically turn, turn and face there, with the general with one of theirs. I think he will do another skirmish move and turn those and bring them forwards, so they're carefully shooting somebody. And these skirmishers are all going to come in and try and mob these, which they might be able to do at close range this time. So we'll do that one, and we'll do another one around the side like that. 
and the Romans have got little command and control with the generals dead and chaos, so they're struggling to deal with it. Let's see if the game finishes this time. We've actually only got one melee, which is over here, which is the cavalry against cavalry, superior against the Roman ones. The Romans are average, but, but I have a feeling they are not melee expert. Let's see, yeah, they're not melee expert. So these will be one up at the moment. So there's a really good question now. Does the general risk going in to try and finish the game? Or does he feel confident that you've got the winning of the game anyway? Well, my thinking is, if I stick him in and get him killed, this could collapse, could be the end of the game. So as long as he's alive, even if these guys suffer a wound, then these guys are going to crush them in the flank. It's only if they suffer a skull that they're going to go down. So he's not going to go in. He's going to risk a green against white against which proves to be a good decision. No damage there. Let's recover. So the guy over here has got two discs, so he can recover both of his legions and get them back into full fettle. So that's rather good. This guy hasn't got anything he needs to recover, but part of his command. And this guy hasn't got anything there. So I think we're into, we're going to be into our finale now. One more turn and it's all over and probably slight advantage the Romans at the moment because they're going to win it probably in the next charge phase. Um, let's see what happens. So for this I'm not going to dish out the cards because, well, except for one guy over here because if he gets three whites it would be embarrassing. Actually even that wouldn't work. These are devastating charges so they can charge for free anything dead ahead. So they are going to be able to charge those and they are to the flank. So we're going to get that happening anyway. And if that wins, everything else is irrelevant because that will be the first dice roll. So again, sometimes you can shortcut and say, look, let's just roll that one. If that one doesn't work, we'll do the rest. So I'm going to do that one. They're charging in the flanks. So they, they've got four. They've got long spear. Five. Devastating charges. Six. These guys get their superior. Takes it down to five. So five up is that against that. So let's see if a miracle happens. Uh, well, something of a miracle happens. They break each other. So that one's broken, and that one's broken. Look at that. Wow. Uh, hang on a minute. I may have just conjured up my first ever mutual destruction in a solo game. <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite entertaining. So, Sassanis break on four losses. So left on the table, one, two, three, four, which means that's their fourth loss. So the Sassanis are definitely broken. Romans on the table have got one two, three, four. Uh, they break on five, so started with nine, so they are also broken. So actually, I couldn't have conjured that up better. That is a mutual destruction, a very, very rare mutual destruction, because the only way you can do it is to break each other's armies on an identical dice roll, because as soon as it finishes, it's all over. So that takes some doing. That's the first one I've ever had in a solo game, and I've heard about, had about four I've heard of in total in the whole history of the game. So both sides of the counter's broken, they've demolished each other. In the scoring system, that gets you a 12-12 for a mutual destruction. So it was going to be a 15-10 to one side or the other until that dice run. Now it's a 12-12. So there you have it. That's a spectacular game, actually, in terms of how that panned out. Let's just have a little bit of author's narrative to how it panned out and the way it panned out. Um, the Romans always started off with a big advantage on this flank. It was... It was quite challenging. With hindsight, those infantry perhaps would have been more sensibly placed here um, and they wouldn't have been so vulnerable. But then again, that flank would have been even more open because there was nothing in the way to protect them. Uh, this, this bit worked out well in the end for the Sassanids. They had the advantage here, but, it, but the Romans being able to use flexible was the difference that slowed it down and stopped it getting in the game too easily. Eventually, you saw the shooting power of the Sassanids cause some damage. It doesn't need to uh, be very much before it weakens part of a line in Pacto. So eventually this bit got quite vulnerable and allowed a breakthrough in the centre. And once that breakthrough happened, the Sassanids were all the way through the centre. The elephants performed pretty well actually today against these Romans. They're less good against the ones with the impact weapons unless these guys shoot them well on the way in, which they, uh, which they didn't. So the elephants did rather well today. Cataphracts, very dangerous troops, dealt with some cavalry. 
and smashed up these light troops on this side as well and turned to finish the game. So these guys probably in the medals on the Roman side having done a lot of the hard work. And the legionaries have taken the feral hammering actually. They've, uh, there are only two of the six legionary togs left in the game. So we've got two legionary togs and two cavalry togs left to retire from the field and only three generals because one of them got one of them got killed by the Asfaran over here. And the Sassanids have got two Asfaran and two elephants and all their generals and lots of light troops to retire. So in a, as a campaign game, that's a really, really interesting one because nobody gets to own the field of battle and therefore recover any troops from the, from the battle. If you read the campaign rules, both of these armies would be a bit hammered, actually, in our Pacto campaign. I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope by going more slowly and explaining the thinking... That, was, that I was going through as I was doing it gives you some insight into the tactical side of the game. Um, it's obviously better playing a live opponent because you don't have to think about both sides and you don't forget the odd bit of rules as you get excited and carried away, which I do because I'm excited with the game. I'll put that up shortly. Enjoy.